Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. In a previous video, we have discussed what happens when great players fail to adapt to the game and become disposable as a result. But what happens when the best in the world evolves even before the game forces him to? What happens when the best adapt their play to stay one step ahead of their opponents? In this video, we take a look at the tactical evolution of Lionel Messi. And if you're new around here, why not subscribe and like the video, and share it as well to help the channel grow. Now, let's get into the evolution of Lionel Messi. Messi is one of the most decorated footballers of all times, but he's not the same as the fresh-faced 17-year-old who debuted for Barcelona in 2004. He runs less than he used to, he dribbles less than he used to, he presses less than he used to, and yet he's more effective than ever. We'll briefly touch on his embryonic stage with his performances in La Masia and Barcelona B. During this period, he was a mazy dribbler who primarily liked to operate in the number 10 position or out on the left wing, a position we rarely see him now. And then came the birth of Lionel Messi on the professional stage. The team he broke into consisted of Ronaldinho, Samuel Eto'o and Lundovic Juli. Messi's favoured positions, the 10 role and the left wing role, were both occupied, with Ronaldinho liking to start on the left and drift inwards. So his manager at the time, Frank Rijkaard, decided to introduce him as a right winger, which at the time was not his preferred position. This phase lasted from 2004 to 2008 and he occupied the number 30 and number 19 shirts. In this phase he was a slight and mazy dribbler who would often aim to get to the byline for a cross or cut in and pass to Ronaldinho or Eto'o in the right half space which he would free up by drawing the fullback. Initially, he was more of a dribbler, scoring only 7 goals in his first 24 appearances. However, from 2006 to 2008, his goal scoring instincts began to rear their head, with 24 goals and 16 assists in his next 2 years in La Liga. He was gaining in confidence and now no longer sticking solely to the right wing but drifting in when he felt comfortable. As he said, My evolution has been a normal process. When I made my debut I was 17 years old. I used to play in another position and in a different manner. He was now establishing himself as one of the best young players in the world, winning Argentine Player of the Year, FIFA World 11 places and FIFA Young Player of the Year awards. And then along came Pep Guardiola. When Pep came in, he made wholesale changes. Initially, Messi started alongside Henri on the left with Samuel Eto'o in the centre, and the next year this changed to Ibrahimovic central with Pedro or Henri on the opposing flank. But Pep made a big call and demoted both of these recognised and two of the best strikers in the world, no less, to allow Messi to play in the false nine position. Now full of enough confidence to play in the centre and bearing the number 10 shirt, Messi played the role perfectly from 2008 to 2014. Playing in this role behind the opposition's defensive midfield but ahead of the centre-backs would force the opposition to make a decision. If the defensive midfielder picked up Messi, that would allow Xavi and Iniesta to progress the ball forward and unlock the defences. If the centre-backs pushed to pick him up, it left gaps for Henri, Villa or Pedro to run into the gaps left behind. And if they both held their positions, Messi could pick up the ball and dribble at the defences. During this period, Messi began to solidify himself as the best in the world and then soon, the best in history. In this period, he won the Ballon d'Or four times among several other awards. His goal scoring was phenomenal and in this six year period in La Liga, he scored 212 goals and 76 assists, a phenomenal return. In 2012-13, he contributed to 24% of their goals and in 13-14, that went up to 40%. He said, Football kept changing as well as my way of moving inside the pitch and my style of play. I believe that I improved a lot in my passing and giving my teammates more assists that end up in goals. I also improved my free kicks and even my right foot. And then the next phase of his evolution came along from 2014 to the present. And in 2014-15 his role changed again. With Neymar and Suarez now forming MSN, Neymar played out wide and the defenders were occupied by Luis Suarez meaning that Luis Enrique moved Messi back to the right wing. But unlike the right winger he was when he first broke in, he was a completely different beast. He wasn't a winger, but instead that was just used as a starting point, usually just on the team sheet more than anything else. He would drift into the centre of the pitch to both score, but now he was letting his creative streak flourish, setting up his teammates more often. He played something between a false nine and an attacking midfielder, using Suarez as a reference point. Suarez would hang on the shoulder of defenders, opening up space between the defence and the midfield. At the same time, the fullback would give Barcelona the width where Messi had vacated his position. His move to the centre was emphasised by how often he would find Jordi Alba before heading into the box to finish off the move. This playmaker trait has been shown by him accumulating 106 assists during this time period. 
But at the same time, unlike when he was a young right winger, he has developed a ruthless streak, scoring 174 La Liga goals during that time period. As Messi said, other squads get a lot of players together in the middle of the field, which makes it easier for me to get the ball a bit more behind and cut in from the sides. And during this period, Messi once again won the Ballon d'Or. So what does the future evolution of Messi hold? Well, Messi could be whatever he wants to be, but in general, the point of view is that he'll start to head towards the center, whether it's to the attacking midfield role or just to the center of midfield. This could be done with Dembele playing out on one side and Coutinho on the other. Whatever he chooses, there's no doubt he'll be one of the best in the role. As Luis Enrique said, his evolution is beyond doubt. It has been a process helped by his maturity as a person. There were years in which he was a goal scorer, but now he's a total footballer, capable of everything in attack and defense. Because he's so intelligent, he'll be able to overcome the physical shortcomings he may face in the very distant future. Well, I for one am keen to see what the evolution of Messi holds. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, please subscribe and share this with someone who would love to see it. Check out our video on the evolution of attacking midfielders to understand the video we're referencing at the start. That's all for today, and remember, keep it simple.